Thank you. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, it's a pleasure to uh, uh, to speak here. I hope you can hear me. I can see the slides. Yes, please. Everything okay? Okay. Yes. Thank you. It's okay. Okay. So uh, so what I'm presenting is uh, joint work with uh, Pablo Linares and Marcus Tempelmeyer, who are two PhD students uh, about to finish at the Max Planck Institute. And it's based on uh, kind of earlier and ongoing work with uh, Jonas Sauer and Scott Smith and Hendrik Weber. Um, it, the topic is uh, kind of regularity structures and uh, in particular the structure group, the algebraic part of it, and, uh, um, and perhaps kind of a different angle of view upon, uh, upon these things. So um, let me... Uh, to, uh, to get to the right kind of set of mind, let me uh, remind you of something uh, of a certain view upon uh, familiar view upon uh, driven ODEs. So uh, uh, let's think of uh, an ODE of this following form with a driver XI, which uh, you might think of being rough, but uh, uh, let's say not too rough, and the initial, uh, the initial value problem. And uh, now the uh, um, philosophy of numerical analysis uh, of Butcher, and that's in a certain sense very close also to the rough path point of view, is instead of kind of uh, thinking about one nonlinearity A, uh, I will always call it A, uh, at a time to think of it, to think of all the nonlinearities at once. So in a certain sense, think of U as not just being a function of time, but also being a functional of the nonlinearity. And since this is kind of a complicated functional, I use this other form of brackets. So there's one, one observation, which I know all of you are familiar with, uh, which in a certain sense is very important for what I'm going to say, namely that in principle, despite the fact that kind of at first it looks like as if you were just solving the homogeneous initial value, value problem, in fact, if you take this perspective, you're also solving all other initial values because you can just recover a solution with an inhomogeneous initial value, U0, by shifting the nonlinearity and shifting the solution in, uh, uh, in, in, in agreement with this. So, uh, uh, so what looked to be just a parameterization of the homogeneous of the solutions with homogene homogeneous initial data, in fact, yields a parameterization of all solutions of this ODE with this uh, kind of uh, uh, with the shift operation, and uh, and then already kind of one step closer to uh, uh, rough path and regularity structures, is the observation that therefore uh, you can also express recentering uh, in terms of shift. Uh, so recentering means instead of looking at the solution uh, that's zero at the origin, let's look at the solution that's zero at time one. And this solution can be recovered by the same type of operation uh, as above from uh, kind of this object here. But now you need, let's say, a variable shift. So the pi by which you shift U space, the, think of just the real line, is something which uh, has to depend on A. And, uh, and in a certain sense, that's uh, 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 what, uh, what the structure group in the end is about. So that's the ODE uh, point of view. Let's go to PDE, let's to fix idea. Uh, let's think of uh, a PDE, uh, a driven PDE that's uh, as close as you you know as possible to the ODE, which would be the generalized parabolic Anderson model, as written down here, and uh, um, and let's think about whether we can do uh, kind of the same type of uh, of trick. Uh, and uh, when you think about it, you realize that PDEs are different uh, in the sense that uh, their solution space is uh, much larger. Um, uh, um, it's, it's parameterized by, uh, for parabolic equation, it would be parameterized by all uh, caloric polynomials, as we say. And if we ask that the equation is just satisfied up to polynomials, it should be parameterized by all polynomials. 
And that's, of course, also a perspective that is familiar uh, to regularity structures, uh, namely that one considers the solution U as uh, a functional, not, not, now, not just of the nonlinearity, but also a local parameterization uh, which comes from polynomial space. So what I want to stress in this talk is, uh, yeah, that's, uh, uh, we should do that. But uh, in a certain sense, we should do it in a greedy way, in the sense that we don't forget uh, completely about the ODE side, uh, where this was not necessary. So that means we should only consider this polyn polynomial parameterization modulo constants, not just the solution modulo constants, which uh, are by shifting u, but in particular the polynomial modulo constants. And that will be kind of uh, an important uh, 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 thought which will come back uh, on the next couple of slides. And in fact, uh, uh, I mean, we were guided, so uh, um, uh, Scott Smith, Yunasawa, uh, uh, and we were guided not so much by this uh, um, uh, uh, stochastic PDE or rough, uh, roughly driven PDE, but by a quasi-linear version. But much of what I'm going to tell you today in, in principle applies to both types of equations and even other types of classes of equations. But in a certain sense, it's most relevant for this class. It's a little bit the theory is a bit impoverished or is kind of... Uh, too, uh, uh, too, too large for the other classes of, uh, of problems. So uh, I think that, I hope that this will become clear later on. So uh, with this in mind, um, in a certain sense, what I want to tell you, what I, the, the story which I want to uh, tell is that in principle, you can understand the, you can derive the structure group from uh, just thinking about two actions on this space AP, so the space of uh, nonlinearities A, which here for simplicity I think of being polynomial, and polynomials P, which are, you know describe the local jets, the local behavior, where, as I said, I want to mod out constants. And uh, so that's uh, what I want to think of. Uh, that's this is how I consider the AP space. And uh, okay, so one uh, kind of cheap and not completely canonical way of modding out constants is, of course, to consider anchored polynomials, which at some arbitrarily chosen origin are equal to zero. Okay, so that's uh, on this space, I want to consider two actions, uh, two very natural actions. One action is the action of shift, and one action is the action of tilt. Let's start with the action of shift. So. I'm thinking of R2 uh, time space uh, acting on uh, AP space by shift. And essentially I want to shift the polynomial, but because I have to keep this constraint, I have to sub subtract P of Y. So that uh, ensures that I'm staying in this space. But this means I'm in a certain sense forgetting something. And in order not to forget this and having the ODE picture in mind, uh, I'm accounting for what I forget here by shift of the nonlinearity of the U argument. So that's the philosophy. I mean, here, kind of respect the fact that you want to look at uh, this quotient space and on the level of the non and account for this on the level of the nonlinearity. That's for shift. And the second action uh, uh, I want to monitor is tilt. So um, we're, we're thinking of P as locally parameterizing the solution. Uh, so we should be able, we should consider what happens if we add kind of a polynomial uh, to P, if we tilt the P variable by adding to it a polynomial Q. So that would be an action of the uh, linear space of polynomials in space time. And uh, again, we have to do this thing. Uh, we have to subtract the value of Q at zero uh, because here we don't assume that Q vanishes at zero. We want to have the full polynomials acting. And uh, again, like for shift, we count for it in the nonlinearity by shifting the nonlinearity. And in a certain sense, all I want to tell you about is kind of 
finding a suitable representation in the representation theoretic sense of these two actions. And, uh, and in a certain sense, when we do this, we ignore all the nice linear or even algebra structure of the A space. Uh, uh, just the, the fact that we have a composition matters, so that kind of makes a bit of connection to the Fadi Bruno uh, uh, algebra, but that will not play a big role here. And uh, uh, we also ignore the fact that this here is a vector space. We just use that it's an affine, or we just retain that it's an affine space in the sense that this vector space of polynomials acts on P. Okay, so, so that's the rule of the game. Uh, we want to find representations for these two actions. I have to do that down here. So, so there is a, I mean, uh, there is a very uh, kind of standard trick to uh, get to a representation uh, of, uh, of a group by uh, endomorphisms. And that means lifting uh, nonlinear maps to uh, the linear space of functions on AP space. So in a certain sense here, uh, we have these uh, for a given shift vector Y or for a given tilt polynomial Q, we have this nonlinear map on AP space. And now we want to encode it, not directly as nonlinear map, but as something which acts on functions on AP space, which I will typically call pi. And uh, so here's the definition. That's kind of the, uh, the straightforward idea of getting, uh, getting some, uh, some linear maps, right? And, uh, and in fact, now we, we also recall that at, on the very first slide, when I was briefly talking about the uh, um, about the uh, uh, ODE case, uh, it was important to have something, or it was natural to have something like a variable tilt or variable shift. So, uh, uh, so uh, a shift vector or tilt vector, which depends itself on A and P, and that is of course something I can now easily do on this functional level, right? I can. Uh, I can, uh, I can think of Q as uh, uh, having coefficients which themselves depend on A and P, and that gives again rise to uh, an endomorphism of the algebra of functions on AP space. And I give it the suggestive name of gamma star, because in fact it, it will be uh, essentially an element of the structure group and the dual of an element of the structure group. And, uh, and then from this form, it's actually easy to realize that why you cannot hope uh, that uh, this will be an action, uh, you still retain some uh, group structure, you retain a monoid structure in the sense that uh, if um, uh, variable shift, variable tilts, pi n give rise to a gamma star, and another set of <clears throat> variable tilts give rise to a gamma prime star, then the product, the composition of these two endomorphisms, comes again from the same structure, and, uh, uh, and uh, what it comes from is given by this expression. It's not just the sum of the pi's, then it would be a nice action in a group, but it's uh, kind of uh, this modification, and I think that's very similar to a structure which was pointed out in, uh, in, in this paper on the level of uh, branch rough path, and uh, um, of course, uh, when we take this route and we want, when we want to use this uh, for recentering, uh, there's immediately one difficulty we see, namely we have to find not just uh, products, but we have to find the inverse element. And, uh, and that's where it becomes, uh, becomes interesting. Uh, why, why do inverse elements exist? So that means this slide is not the end uh, the end of the story. So, and it's also not the end of the story because um, in the end we want to have matrices, right? A representation of a group or group actions leads to uh, uh, matrices. So uh, that means we need to uh, uh, fix coordinates on a P space. And uh, kind of the most straightforward way of uh, and this is something which you find uh, in kind of Fadi Bruno, is to take uh, the following set of coordinates 
on AP space. So remember, AP is a huge space. I mean, if you want infinite dimensional, and uh, uh, you take uh, coordinates uh, zk, which are indexed by a natural number and zero, which uh, amount to taking derivatives of the nonlinearity a evaluated at zero. That's one set of coordinates. And then we need a second set of coordinates for the p part, which is built very much along the same lines. But now, again, it's important that n equal to zero does not appear here. That's our philosophy of greedy representation. Uh, the n equal to zero does not appear here. And um, then what <clears throat> in regularity structures is called the abstract model space. And I will give you an example of this in a second. Uh, in fact, or rather it's algebraic dual T star will be a suitable linear subspace of uh, the space of formal power series in these infinitely many variables. And these variables indexed by k and n, and both k and n are kind of come from the infinite set. So, uh, uh, so that's, uh, that's how we will think about the, uh, uh, the abstract model space. And uh, now how do we find uh, the abstract model space? I mean, how do we find, how, how do we figure out uh, which subspace, uh, which linear subspace of this formal power series space it should be. Well, that's not so hard. We uh, take um, on the formal level, uh, we take, uh, we, we, we return to our general solution, which we think of being something which is parameterized by the nonlinearity, and if you want the local behavior P, and we take partial derivatives with respect to these coordinates because A and P can be represented in terms of these coordinates. And we take partial derivatives with respect to these coordinates, which means uh, for every multi-index beta, uh, so something which uh, uh, associates a natural number to K and a natural number to N in such a way that the, uh, uh, that the, um, uh, the sum uh, is finite. So that's what a multi-index is like. We know that from taking partial derivatives in RN. So, uh, uh, so for every multi-index beta, uh, we get a model component, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, and now we should look at the population properties of the model to figure out uh, how large the subset T star should be. So that's the uh, uh, that's in a certain sense the uh, the recipe how to figure out what T star uh, should be. So let me explain that. In case of the quasi-linear and in case of the two other problems on the next slide. Uh, before doing that, let me point out that, in, of course, like always in geometry, introducing coordinates is arbitrary. So here in particular, we have fixed an origin for U space and we have fixed an origin for X space. That's completely arbitrary. But it's fine as long as we take the, and that's a general philosophy of geometry, if we take the symmetry operations which change these origins into account. And that is what we're going to do uh, in a couple of slides. But coming back to, uh, uh, to how to figure out what the right uh, subspace should be. So uh, as I said, for every multi-index beta, uh, we get an equation for uh, the model. Uh, according to Hira's postulates, Populate the multi-indices which correspond to uh, 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 to just the integers n themselves by the polynomials, and then uh, for the rest uh, it's defined inductively. So beta equal to zero corresponds to uh, uh, just the solution of the linear equation. Beta equal to e zero corresponds to something which involves the uh, second derivative of the linear uh, solution, and at beta equal to e one you get uh, uh, Gets, you, you start to get uh, nonlinear terms. And in fact, uh, uh, this sequence of equation can be very compactly written uh, using the uh, algebra structure or the multiplication on the power series ring uh, by, this, uh, by this formula. And you can would get a similar formula for uh, generalized parabolic Anderson or for phi 4, everything now at the moment without any renormalization. And uh, so, uh, uh, so this is kind of on a formal side, the link between uh, multi-indices and the model. And uh, 
let me explain to you um, uh, how it connects to trees. Um, so the bottom line of this talk in a certain sense is we don't need trees, but of course uh, it's interesting to see how it connects to trees. So, uh, and the, the observation is that um, uh, uh, any monomial uh, corresponds to a specific linear combination of trees. And uh, I've taken, uh, so here I'm looking at the three different classes of uh, 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 equations, the quasi-linear class, uh, the general parabolic Anderson model class, uh, the 5-4 class, and I've looked at kind of trees, which in a certain sense look alike. So here, just two edges, four, or well, this one in a certain sense is open, is always sitting, hanging at these trees. So, uh, uh, so one plus one edge, three plus one edges, one plus one edge, but the decoration coming from the polynomial. And, uh, and what, we, what you realize is that <clears throat> for the different classes of PDEs, trees kind of correspond to different monomials. So for instance, this tree here with its double edge and single edge, uh, in the quasi-linear class, you will find in the monomial Z0. In the uh, 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 a parabolic Anderson model class, you will find it in the monomial Z0, Z1. In the 5-4 class, you will find it in the monomial Z1. Uh, likewise, kind of this linear combination of trees, which is kind of similar to this one up to uh, the symmetry operation, you will find in different monomials. And likewise for uh, kind of uh, decorated trees by kind of polynomials, where you'll find them in different monomials. So, uh, but in the end, it's this type of, uh, it's, it's the previous slide, uh, which uh, these equations, which inform you how uh, you should choose which subspace, linear sub subspace T star you should choose. And uh, what we find is that in a certain sense, the largest one you need for the quasi-linear class for the um, uh, parabolic Anderson model, uh, you have one additional population condition, which is given by this linear relation on multi-indices. For phi four, you have another one, which uh, 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 is pretty trivial. So, uh, uh, so that is what informs the, what should be uh, uh, the, uh, um, the abstract model space. And uh, what holds in all classes is that uh, the model is only populated uh, if beta belongs to the disjoint union of two sets. One set of multi-indices just corresponds to the plane polynomial part of the model and the other part, the other portion is different, and it's in a certain sense characterized by this number here, which you associate. It's not a length because it doesn't have a sign. This number, which you associate to the multi-index beta, which has a very kind of natural interpretation, it's uh, kind of the homogeneity in U minus the homogeneity in P, and U and P in a certain sense live have the same scale, live on the same footing. So it's a natural object. And that's uh, the constraint you always find. And therefore you always have a kind of a natural decomposition into a direct sum, one part which corresponds to uh, the polynomial sector and a natural complement. And uh, uh, comparing it to higher, um, our model space in a certain sense is, is, is besides the difference between multi-indices and trees, which makes it more greedy, it's also more greedy because we just look at kind of the part of the model with positive homogeneity, so to say. So one would find uh, 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 ignoring the difference between multi-indices and trees, uh, a high res model space by taking the direct sum between our T, so the pre-dual, uh, R for the constants, and T tilde for, uh, let's say, the negative part of the model, so the right-hand sides. And the integration map in Hira, in our sense, in, for us, in a certain sense, is trivial. It's just the uh, injection of T tilde into T. So that's one uh, slide to connect to, uh, to Hira's model space. But, uh, but I didn't want to speak so much about the model space, but rather about the um, uh, structure group. And uh, so uh, it's very natural to uh, 
um, approach it, you know, from a Lie algebraic point of view, because uh, uh, we have certain actions. These actions have infinitesimal generators. Uh, uh, then we take these generators, uh, hope to build a Lie algebra, and then look at the corresponding Lie group. So that's kind of a very standard thing. And so on this slide, I start telling you about the generators of the actions we were interested in. So uh, we had the tilt, uh, we had the shift, and uh, but we already saw in the ODE example that it's very useful also to look at the shift in use space. And in fact, in a certain sense, that's the most important or interesting operator which we call D0 for a reason, because in the representation of the shift, it kind of comes up in the same way as these much uh, kind of uh, uh, more uninteresting looking DNs for N not equal to zero. So here again, uh, we see what comes from the fact that we, we, we took this greedy approach of modding out constants, right? I mean, there's a difference between the D0 and the DN. And, uh, and all these operators can be defined, uh, can be properly defined, uh, despite the fact that they look like as if they could contain infinite sums. They can be properly defined as derivations on the algebra of, uh, uh, of the power series ring. So as elements, uh, using this abbreviation, so as elements of the uh, Lie algebra of derivations. And, uh, and the, the first good message is that <clears throat> despite the fact that we treated constants in this strange, greedy way, when it comes to these operators, their commutators, their Lie brackets behaves as you would expect, as you would hope for. In particular, D0 is appearing here on the right-hand side if you take the right type of, uh, uh, the corresponding type of commutator. So in a sense, from a, from a representation theoretic point of view, the strange thing we did at the beginning uh, seems okay because in terms of uh, uh, the Lie algebra, uh, we get the right, uh, uh, the right relations. So now the idea is to build on this in order to get to the structure group, to get to the co-module and module, uh, all these uh, structures which come up in, in, in regularity structures. And, um, <clears throat> but before doing so, um, we um, have to uh, add one uh, other element because in the end, I mean, at the beginning, I said that we were interested in what I call variable tilt, right? Uh, that uh, seems, seemed already in the ODE case necessary to uh, get the recentering operation. So that means we have to be able to multiply one of these derivations by, uh, uh, by a monomial by the multiplication operator given by the monomial. So in the end, what we want to consider for a moment are the uh, two derivations which correspond to shift, as yes, shift, and then uh, this family of derivations which corresponds to variable tilt. And um, now we're all familiar with the fact that the, uh, uh, that the set of derivations uh, forms a Lie algebra uh, but in fact, uh, there is a stronger structure, which unfortunately is called pre li algebra, as if it were a weaker structure. But there is a stronger structure because those are derivations on the flat space, right? I mean, in fact, an affine space. So, uh, uh, so the Lie algebra, in fact, comes, grows out of a pre li product, which essentially is something like a, um, 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 a connection. And uh, in our case, uh, it turns out that uh, uh, for uh, these, uh, uh, for this collection of uh, uh, derivations, this pre Lie product uh, can be easily computed and is given by by these three uh, three lines. So, in a certain sense, for the moment, all the information, all the stru interesting structural information, is in these uh, is in these three uh, formulas here. So. So the, the importance of pre Lie structures, of course, is something uh, uh, which has been recognized in the uh, uh, in the uh, renormalization and also the very recent renormalization uh, um, uh, literature, where um, 
uh, it has been assimilated to uh, what's called grafting, so uh, kind of putting trees together. And so therefore, uh, it's interesting to see, uh, uh, to check whether uh, what uh, uh, we do here is uh, uh, it, how it is related to grafting. And, uh, and the, the short answer is there is, there doesn't seem to be a very clear connection uh, between grafting. Later on, I will tell you that there is a clear connection to pruning. But uh, when you look at grafting, uh, and uh, so that would be what we get on our kind of geometric side. If you translate it by our dictionary into trees, let's say, for instance, for parabolic Anderson, you get something which doesn't look completely wrong, but this tree shouldn't be there. Uh, this factor of two is not uh, really uh, justified, and this factor of three, three is also strange. So there is it's not a clear connection, not a clear connection to graft. Okay, so I think uh, since I'm uh, um, uh, running a little bit out of time, perhaps I have to speed up a bit. So now in a certain sense, we, we so trees anyway didn't have a play a role in what I wanted to tell you, just uh, for information. Now I'm, I, what I want to tell you is that now we kind of in a certain sense use algebraic machinery. So, uh, uh, so there are two uh, gradations uh, which live on this uh, uh, set of derivations. And uh, uh, these gradations um, uh, suggest to kind of define a homogeneity, which is a certain linear combination of these gradations. And uh, uh, this homogeneity then informs you uh, which uh, uh, elements to actually put into your Lie algebra. And here you see this connection, which uh, those who know about uh, regularity structures uh, are uh, familiar with, namely that the uh, uh, that the um, um, length of this uh, uh, index n has to be less than the homogeneity of uh, of gamma, and uh, then it's easy to check uh, because these gradations are compatible with the pre uh, Lie product that. Uh, uh, Indeed, uh, the pre Lie product preserves L, and uh, as, one, as a side effect, one also gets the right type of uh, triangular structure on the level of the transposed. And uh, and now you now you uh, kind of start uh, looking into textbooks. Uh, so uh, from the pre Lie uh, product, you get the Lie uh, bracket. Um, uh, we can uh, see, uh, we then take this more abstract point of view that we see the, uh, we forget that the Lie algebra consists of endomorphisms. We just view it as a direct sum over the index set. Uh, that allows us to put it into uh, 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 this framework of universal enveloping algebras, and we get a Hopf algebra. And uh, uh, the representation which we had on the level of L lifts uh, to the level of the Hopf algebra, but it's no longer faithful. It's no longer one-to-one, -one, but it's still there. And, um, um, and then uh, uh, that's something uh, we learned from the recent papers. Uh, um, uh, uh, the, uh, once, once your universal enveloping algebra comes from, uh, uh, from such a, um, a pre lie structure, there is a canonical isomorphism between uh, the universal enveloping algebra and the symmetric, um, uh, uh, the symmetric tensor products. And the benefit of this is that now suddenly you have a canonical basis, which before you didn't have. And, uh, um, and this canonical basis allows you, in a certain sense, to construct pairings to, uh, 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 to vector spaces, which have natural index sets, uh, uh, which are related to that basis. And uh, equipped with this, uh, you can define the operators, which uh, those of you uh, know, uh, know regularity structures know from, uh, uh, from the work of Martin Heira. And uh, uh, so being aware that this is, sorry, that this is very uh, fast now. Oops, what did I do? Um, uh, that this is uh, very quick. Sorry, that's one step back. Um, that uh, because there are enough finiteness and gradedness properties, by dualization, one gets the co-product, one gets the co-module, and one gets the intertwining axioms of Hira for free. So, uh, so this is all machinery, and uh, perhaps therefore it's interesting 
to look again uh, at examples. And uh, so here uh, are a couple of examples where I give you the formula for the co-module, which is kind of a key object in, uh, uh, in, in Hira's theory, uh, as it acts on certain monomials. So the first uh, component of the answer is uh, then a forest. Here is an empty forest. Uh, and the second, uh, second part of the answer is, uh, is uh, something that's in T itself. And, uh, uh, and if you do that, uh, you find out that this is kind of perfectly in line with the pruning, which um, uh, so kind of cutting off branches uh, uh, for trees. And, uh, but of course, uh, uh, so here uh, I'm interpreting this identity on the level of the quasi-linear class, then it turns into this identity, which is consistent with pruning. Uh, here again in the quasi-linear class, uh, with, um, uh, 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 with now also containing kind of uh, uh, decorated trees by polynomials, that's also consistent. And, uh, uh, but uh, uh, also kind of similar formulas then have a different interpretation if you apply them, if you use the dictionary of GPAM, uh, but there also it's also consistent. And uh, uh, for 5.4, it's also consistent. So in a certain sense, these pruning rules uh, for different types of trees, decorated trees live uh, behind these, live in these, uh, live in these formulas. Okay, that's uh, uh, a standard, uh, a standard slide. Uh, uh, once you have uh, co-product and product, you get the structure group. That's uh, general theory. Uh, the structure group uh, are those elements of the dual of T plus, which are multiplicative. Uh, the co-product allows you to define uh, a group operation on G that makes it into the group, and the co-module uh, allows you to identify it actually with an endomorphism. And there you have your desired representation. So, uh, um, so that's again general theory. Uh, let me, I think my time is almost done, let me close with the statement that, um, so so, so he, I mean, what in a certain sense we we what we advocate or our point of view in a certain sense forgets about the tree structure, takes takes this more greedy structure, um, and uh, and of course this would only be of merit if um, uh, the other things which we need in renormalization can also be done in this more greedy structure. And the, uh, uh, the answer to that is that we hope that this is true. So it's clear that uh, kind of uh, the type of counter term which you would wish for in, uh, in the quasi-linear class can be, uh, uh, can be parameterized uh, nicely in terms, of, uh, uh, in terms of our structure. That's the first uh, observation. I'm going to just go quickly over these last slides. Um, the next, uh, the next uh, uh, slide tells you that uh, uh, on the level of the stationary model, we know exactly how the counter term should look like. Uh, it's, uh, it's this one here. Uh, the rest was what I showed you as this compact way of writing the equation for the model. And, uh, and the, uh, um, uh, the structure of the counter term is compatible with a structure group uh, in the sense uh, that uh, you can pass uh, from the stationary model to the centered model uh, and you retain uh, the form of the counter term. And um, the, uh, uh, the standard renormalization, the standard choice uh, uh, fits nicely into this form. So uh, uh, one can choose a, a kind of a unique set of these constants such that uh, the uh, right-hand side of your equation, which is the part of the model of negative homogeneity, has vanishing expectation. And from a symmetry, you get a bit more. And uh, so this is all clear. And the last thing is something uh, we're in the, in the progress of understanding that uh, with this renormalization, indeed, you get the uh, uh, stochastic estimates uh, uh, which are postulated by, uh, by Hira's theory without having to pass via trees. So, uh, uh, so the, the, our hope is a bit that uh, 
um, uh, uh, for, what it's, for what it's worth, that uh, kind of uh, the entire theory can be done on, on, on the level which I presented, uh, which I presented today, where kind of this last part certainly is, uh, is, the, uh, uh, is the most, uh, most interesting part. And that this, in a certain sense, replaces to some extent uh, combinatorics uh, by, um, uh, by, well, if you want geometry. And, uh, uh, and with this, uh, let me stop. So thank you for this nice talk. Uh, there are some common questions. <coughs> Eva, yes. Yeah. Thank you very much for your talk. Uh, very nice. And um, I have a question for for the last part when you are talking about about the PPIG renormalizations. So you know that yeah. we use extraction contractions on on trees on uh, or on here you encode everything with uh, like multi indices. So what would be the off algebra or like uh, the, your combinatorial procedure for equivalent to this extraction contraction procedure? This so this is this is something we so uh, so the short answer is uh, I mean at least I haven't um, haven't explored that yet I know that my some of my people are thinking about this some of the postdocs working here uh, I have you know I've been kind of happy with the fact that uh, kind of the standard renormalization can be reproduced and uh, that uh, we get the right estimates but you're completely right that this should be uh, uh, should be explored uh, in more detail. And the short answer is, I don't know. <laughs> Some other questions, Thomas? Thank you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if I may. Ivan, you, you have another one? Yeah. It's about the, the big radiation. At some point, you introduced a big radiation in the middle of the talk. Yeah. Is it to the big radiation that we use uh, with Lorenzo and um, Lambotti and Martin Herrer when we try to formulate these uh, infinite sums? Um, oh, this is for another purpose. Um, that's a good question. So, so the um, um, I would have to uh, you would have to point me more exactly to. Uh, to what you're referring to, it might well be. But I think it's a very natural. It's a very natural. Uh, I, I like the name bigradation, um, which in a certain sense is dictated by um, by these uh, derivations, and uh, and so therefore I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if this is the same. But I don't know. Again, the short answer is I don't know. Thank you. <laughs> 